So hey guys and welcome back to uh, another stream and in today's uh, live stream we're going to be continuing uh, what we were doing yesterday with trying to build the address buses uh, and the various control signals for the RAM memory uh, and then tomorrow and over the next few days we'll be building out all of the data path in full and then filling in the control signals. So we'd got to the point where we had uh, two bytes of memory in two rows, uh, a single column, and we've created a whole bunch of signals. Uh, one of them is the write enable. Uh, one of them is the column enable for this column, uh, this layer enable. So we're gonna have uh, multiple layers of RAM vertically, multiple columns going across in this direction, and two rows that we've already got going this way. Uh, and then we've got a row enable for each row. And we'd built the right, uh, so we'd built the clock control signals, uh, which also incorporates the read, uh, sorry, the write enable and the uh, row column layer enable signals. And now we need to extend the same thing, uh, but this time for the read enable of this row, and then we'll duplicate uh, what we've done in order to build the uh, write and read enables for the second row. So, uh, as ever, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments uh, or in the live chat. I'll do my best to respond. And um, yeah, let's crack on. So, in order to build the read enable, uh, we need to build a similar thing to what we had before, um, but this time we're going to try and go upwards because the read enable is above us. Um, and to do that, we're going to hope that we can pass power through this. Now, we also need to have a repeater on these uh, wires. So we don't need the, we're not, we're not going to need the write enable for the read section. Um, so we'll ignore the write enable for now, but the column enable is going to need a repeater. And interestingly, we can build a repeater uh, or something kind of similar to it by putting two knock gates in a row, right? Because the torch boosts the power and uh, two knock gates in a row is logically equivalent to having none. Um, but in terms of power distribution, it allows us to extend the distance. Um, so if we apply that principle here, we can now extend the distance that this power is going to go through um, without needing extra stuff. And if we actually use this as the inversion, then this block is powered, meaning we can extract power from it, uh, or it will be powered when I switch the switch off. Um, so we can use this fact uh, to extract power uh, above the signal without interfering with it. Okay, so here what we did was we took a copy of all the signals and we ordered them all together to get our uh, write enable uh, that we then put into the circuitry. So we're gonna do the same thing here and we recognize that uh, in order to read, we um, need this, this is negative logic. Uh, so again, just ordering the signals together is gonna be fine. Uh, I may have built this one offset from where it should be. Okay. So if we turn on our layer and column signals, which means when these are on, it means disable this layer and column because this is negative logic. So um, yeah, we should now get power on this row up here, which will then disable this 
read signal. Uh, and what we haven't done is boost the power across that read signal. We must have done it for the right signal. Did it for the right, we just didn't do it. I didn't do it for the read. So I'm going to go and do that now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, our repeat is fine. Okay, so we're going to end up needing to do the same thing for the read on here, uh, but we'll figure that out later. So that's fine, but then we also need to bring this uh, read enable signal over. Let's try and make this a little bit more pretty. Um, and we don't want the power to flow the wrong way through this, so we'll do that. Okay, so now when I turn on the uh, row enable, again disabling this row, that should now propagate all the way down. And if I turn off these two, we can see whether the power is going to reach. I've got a feeling it's going to uh, it run out. We can't tell at this point. Oh, okay. So the power stretches from that repeater round. Good. So that gives us the uh, read enable for that row. Oh, hey, Archer Gaming, good to see you back again today. And uh, now we just need to go and build the write enable for this one in exactly the same way we had for this uh, row here. So, how did I do it? <laughs> Let me get the positioning right. Um, so we've got a reference point here which was this wire going into our inverter there um, and everything's kind of set from that so the first drop down is one block over. There's our inverter one block over that should be where the drop down is and then everything was offset from that this I think and then we extract the power from those all them all together let's go check I've done that right yep and then we need this kind of pattern of blocks coming down into that repeater. Replace where this is. That. Okay. So hopefully that now works, but we're going to need a repeater in here to boost the power along. Perfect. So that's the right enable for that one. Uh, and if I actually enable this layer, enable right, and enable this row then we should see all of this switches off means this torch switch is on means that the clock's there and then if we go toggle the clock we should see the opposite yeah now that one's off and this one's on so the clock is toggled across just as we wanted it to okay 
so now just to do the read signal which as before is hopefully fairly simple we just bring this across here and put torches on there bring that down there and I need to enable these wires so that I can see the power and see where these uh, repeats need to be put in. Don't really matter too much. Here we go. And of course this write enable is actually not needed down here. And then we have to bring the read enable over. So as before, take it down to bring it across at the same level as the data and step it down at the end and a repeater there. Stop the power flowing backwards. Bring that down there. I'm just going to briefly destroy these torches so we can see power coming from this. And we're going to see where that power runs out. So there I've left three. Have I done the same thing on this one? One, two, three. Yeah. Again, the like being crazy consistent about all of the detail here doesn't really affect the performance of the design. It just affects how difficult it's going to be to debug later if I have made a mistake anywhere. Okay, so now I'm going to test that I can enable uh, this row and I should see the data from it come out, which we toggled the clock earlier to do the right. So this is now uh, seemingly the correct data, except that I've connected something where it shouldn't be connected. How's that happened? Oh dear, the output's not working as I intended. And it's a good thing we spotted that now, otherwise that really would be an annoying bug to try and fix later. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go and fix all of these. And that comes in there. Why do I feel like Did I just place something slightly wrong in the first one? I'm not sure. I feel like it should have been possible to do this in fewer blocks. I 
think this should have... Ah, uh, that's why it didn't work, because of the one to the right of it, not the one to the... I'm not end up with too many additional bugs uh, in the design. Okay, so hopefully our output's now all working independently and I've not messed this up. So that's the read enable, and now we can go and actually test our uh, data signals and write enable and everything by doing this. So we know that we've enabled that row, and we know that write is enabled. So if I, if I were to disable write and toggle the clock, the output shouldn't change now and it didn't Oof. Uh, if I now enable right and toggle the clock oh did it twice never mind we should see the data change and it did and it changed to the right thing as well good so we have working layer row and column enable signals for each of these uh, for each of these things. Uh, let me see if I can just get this lined up. And I'm going to disable everything for now uh, so that I'm not randomly changing stuff. Okay. So now we need to copy this over to get our next column, which is going to be an interesting challenge. So this is where I'm going to be, and I'm going to just fill for a second a row of diamond all the way along here so that we can see the start marker, a line to stand on. I could do this with coordinates, but I think it's going to look nice having a line of diamond going the entry point to the memory. Great. And then I want to also set a border around the um, memory that we've already got so that we can, when we copy it, hopefully these borders will end up touching each other um, and it will be easy to tell whether the copy was successful. If it's unsuccessful and it overwrites something by accident, then we've got a serious problem. Okay. 
Okay. There's our border. That's our two memory bytes that we have so far. And now we need to work out where to copy them to. So the useful thing about this is it also allows me to see underneath exactly where I need to be. That's far enough down. So I can write down the coordinates now. So this is 223.17. Our corner over here. I build high enough. Later we'll need to work out the exact height uh, in order to copy the layers upwards but for now it's not going to matter. Um, so this is exactly in line with that border. So this is 252, 45, 48. Now, what I'd like to do is copy it into this line here, which is okay. So I'm gonna I want the same forwards backwards as I had before, which is two hundred, and I want the same left right, just one block over from where we had before, uh, which is. 16 and vertically I want to be up down I want to be at that lower level that we used which was 23 so hopefully this clone is going to work 223 17 shout now if I'm about to make a mistake the 8 316. This goes wrong. <laughs> we obliterate two days of work. <laughs> Thoughts and destination cannot overlap. I must have done something wrong. Because it shouldn't be saying that. So 223, 16 is one over. Oh, well, I'm glad it said that because uh, the problem is that this number here needs to be even lower it needs to be the width of this thing i forgot about that um so the width of this is 48 minus 17 which is uh 31 <laughs> i should be able to do that faster um so we need to go 31 less than 16 should be minus 15 yeah uh, no. Oh my goodness. When I'm this tired. Uh, if I add as to that. Yeah, so it should be minus 15. Again, it says. Oh, that, that was the previous message that it was repeating for us. So there we've got the line of diamond blocks next to each other and the diamond block marker that I put in originally uh, to show the very corner. So that seems to have worked. Thank goodness for that. Um, so now we have two columns, two rows, that's four bytes of memory. And if I link up these row enables by putting repeaters in the right place, then we should end up with an actually working system, but I'll also need to link the clocks and the clear 
and the layer enables. Okay, it's nice, there's only one repeater to link those up. That bodes well. Um, so we also need to link up these clear signals. don't need that uh, version of the clear and then we also have to link up the block signal which is this one So this uh, clock, network, clock network actually isn't the most efficient because we've got the clock signal coming in in one corner and then propagating all the way down, which means there's a, like the far corner here won't receive the clock until two ticks after this corner receives the clock signal. This is called clock skew in real engineering. Uh, it's a massive problem in real circuits. Um, it slows everything down. In an ideal world, what we'd actually do is have the clock come in the middle here, um, and then it would uh, propagate outwards in kind of four fingers going out diagonally so that it reached all four memory cells at the same time and dropped down into the system at the same time. But uh, as I said when I first started this, this is not gonna be an efficient system. Uh, <laughs> That's not what I'm aiming for here. I'm just aiming for something that works uh, and that works well enough. And unfortunately, I'm one block off on the repeater uh, here. So. If I can get that one block closer and now the clock goes all the way down and hopefully the clear signal is also propagating. Uh, oh, it's not because I've had to put the repeater in there. Now the clear signal is also uh, reaching all the way down. So hopefully if I clear all the data from the entire memory, we should end up with blank outputs on both columns. We'll link up the data outputs from the columns later. Uh, I'm not going to try and deal with that now. We'll also link up the data inputs later on. Um, again, not going to deal with that right now. So the clear works. Uh, now we want to check that each memory cell reads and writes correctly. So because the two columns are independent, I'm going to do both at once. Uh, so we're going to write the both columns uh, Oh, we haven't linked up the layer enable. Right. So the layer enable has to be done For this entire thing. Gonna bump into the clock if I don't 
pull it back. Here we go, that's that, and then the layer enabler is back here somewhere. So I know that we're definitely going to need a repeater at this point in order to get enough power to propagate all the way down. And run this all the way back. Well, that through to there, that through to there. Ooh. That links our layer enable signals. So now our columns and rows are independent. Um, but the rows are linked across in the right way. So we'll enable that and we should now be able to uh, toggle the clock. Although what I've realized is this is going to be really difficult to access later if I don't do something about it now. Um, so we'll power that clock. Oh, uh, that needs to be a repeater, otherwise the power will run out too soon. And place this here. So now I've toggled the clock, and hopefully, if everything worked, the first two uh, bytes should have been written with the same data on both, which they have. And now if I disable the read for that row, our data output should just switch off. And they have. Now we're going to do the same for the next row. So we're going to read enable the next row. Uh, sorry, row enable. Row enable, which will do both read and write. Uh, the write is set. That's Toggle the clock, write some data. Cool, and we've written the same data. And we can disable that row now. And our data goes back to zeros. And then the last thing to check, we already checked this for this column, but we haven't checked it for the next column, which is the write op. And of course, I've not uh, connected up the write operation. So, Let's do that now. So switch that on, work out where the power's flowing. So now I'm going to change the data inputs. Uh, let's say, for example, we have all ones. Uh, our write is disabled by having that switched on. Our layer and our columns are enabled. Let's enable one of the rows. We see that the data outputs switch on and now we can go toggle the clock and hopefully nothing changes on any of these. Good, nothing changed. Uh, let's do the same for this row. Again, whoops, that's the right, not the clock. Okay, so let's toggle the clock. Hopefully nothing changes. Nothing changed. Good. And the last thing I'm going to do is, now that I've linked up the right, do that and prove that this will actually write some data into those two bytes. Yep, 
Perfect. So we can now see that our first and second columns are working. Um, the next step is to copy this uh, twice more across to get four columns. Okay, so we went 31 across last time. Uh, let's do the same again. So that's uh, minus 46. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, we've only got one row of diamond, not two. Is that because the border didn't get fully copied last time? Or is that because there should be two rows of iron next to it and then two rows of diamond? And here I've got two rows of iron and one row of diamond. So it looks like when I copied this, I didn't copy the yeah. So I just didn't. I copied it one short of where it should have been. All right, that's okay. It's uh, not destroyed anything. We'll link this up in a moment. So. Now we need to do the same again. So we went from minus 15 to minus 47 before, which was 32 across. So now uh, nine minus 79. Good. And that time it's all lined up exactly as intended. Those are powered. These should be powered. Figure out where the repeaters are needed. Uh, side. Okay, so the row enables are linked and our clock and column signals are going to fall short because on one of them we haven't built it yet and on the others it's just done a partial copy of what was there before. So we're going to run these signals across. So that's the right operation. Ooh. That's going to get connected like that. Peter, Peter. And one also has a repeater. Uh, hmm, that's interesting. There's some kind of difference here that I don't understand. Plum enable. I'm just going to go power all of these signals so I can see nothing interferes by accident. Oh, well, I guess the column doesn't matter on that one. Uh, and I want to power the clock as well.
This one is the uh, layer enable. Bring this all the way across. Down. And we can actually simplify that bit of design there. And do the same thing on this side. Uh, on this one. Alrighty, let's boost the power. Power. Is the Peter in the right place? Does it really be? Oh, that is actually exactly in the right place. Alrighty. And then we're not going any further, so these are just unnecessary extra. This is where the clock signal will come in in a moment. It's actually all of that's not necessary. This is overcomplicated. Still got the clock to do in a second. All right, so, um, that's our clear, sorry, not our clear, our um, layer enable and our right enable. This is the clock coming across on this wire. So again, we'll bring this over. That's not necessary. This is at the wrong height. We want to make it match up. And I'm going to make a repeater come in here so that there's enough power for all of this to reach properly. And I will, of course, be testing all of this because if there's a mistake in this layer, it's going to get copied into all the layers, which would then be a real pain to debug. So as arduous as it is going to be, I'm going to have to test every single byte that we've built to see that it works. Same thing on that one. Oh, 
Okay, so we've got individual column enables, we've got row enables going all the way across. Uh, ah, we don't have a separated clear signals yet. So another nice thing about redstone is we can take as many copies of the power as we like and it will spread out in all directions. You know, spreading in one direction doesn't suck power from another, which is really kind of strange uh, compared to the real world where if you take two sources of power and split them, you get half the power in each, not 100% of the power in in both. <laughs> um, hmm. This ended off by one somehow. But. That's a bit frustrating. Um, How is that? This is where that's going to come in. shifting this slightly I can make it all stretch further without having a whole bunch of unnecessary extra repeaters uh, and again on the final column this extended part just isn't necessary destroy this version of the clear. We should now have <laughs> uh, everything linked up. Lock, clear, layer enable, write enable. Uh, data lines are all unconnected at the moment, but that's okay. And the rows are connected. So the first thing I'm going to do is test whether the clear works. And to do that I'm going to enable every uh, every row and column and the whole layer and I should end up reading zero. Uh, so that column's enabled. This column is enabled and this column is enabled. And now if I go and look at the data, I'm getting zeros on everything, which is good. So now I want to just enable one row at a time. And with the right disabled, if I toggle the clock, nothing should change. Oops, that's the clear, sorry. If I toggle the clock, nothing should change, even though all the data inputs are set. This row is enabled, you know, all the columns are enabled, but the right isn't enabled, and with any luck, none of the data changed. Yep, so none of the data outputs changed. And now if I enable writing, and toggle the clock. We should end up with 
all the outputs being ones right the way across. Uh, if I do Yeah, that makes it a bit easier for us to see because everything's glowing. Good. Now if I um do the other row. So disable the read there, everything switched off. Disable uh, sorry, enable the read on this row. This was all the data in those were cleared before, so all the outputs should be off. And now pulse the clock. That will propagate all the way through and all of our outputs switch on as the data has been written. And now I can disable this row and all the data should switch off. Good. Now if I enable this row, I can test each, uh, I can test the layer. So I can turn off the entire layer. No, I can't. Something's gone wrong. That should have disabled the entire layer, but it hasn't, apparently. Uh, and that would be because these repeaters aren't in the right place. So here it's between the first and second. For some reason here, oh I see, if I enable this row I'll see the same problem. Yeah. Okay, so this was a mistake I made in the first column, uh, which I'm now going to have to fix in every single column. So there you go, I didn't test enough, made a mistake, and now I've got to go and fix it. <laughs> so in real engineering, uh, when we design a processor, we have something called tape out. And tape out is where you've designed your computer processor, you've, you've designed what the layout of the circuit is going to be, where all the transistors are going to go, um, and then you want to send it off for manufacture. Um, I'm, I'm giving a slightly kind of loose explanation here, but basically, yeah, you've got the design of your processor and you want it to be manufactured into real silicon, and that's a very expensive one-off kind of cost because you have to produce what are called masks, and lots of other things as well, potentially uh, packaging and tooling and all the rest of it. Um, and so you want to make sure that when you send it for uh, production, that it's definitely correct, that there are no mistakes, uh, no issues. Uh, and so we call that moment in time tape out and everything has to be verified correct before tape out. Um, it's almost impossible to eliminate every single bug from a modern computer chip of any real size, um, but that's what we attempt to do, um, and we get increasingly good at it, and chips get increasingly complex, so we have to try harder, um, and that's part of what my PhD has been about. Uh, actually, the ma my main thesis is about verification and how we can use some modern techniques to verify hardware and get absolute certainty that the hardware is correct um, before ever even progressing to the later, more costly, time-consuming stages of design and then production. Right, and the last thing I'm going to do, just because uh, it will look a bit nicer and save Minecraft a tiny bit of simulation effort, is to destroy these additional row enable wires. Right, so that's our first layer. Blimey. Uh, so this has been going about an hour and four minutes now, is it? I'm not entirely sure. How long have I been streaming for? 59 minutes. Blimey. Um, so as you can see, building all of this has taken a little while. Um, the write operation is just one of our control signals as a clock and clear. The tricky bit is going to be decoding the address into these column and layer enable signals and these row enable signals. 
Um, so I'm going to show now what a decoder is briefly in the next sort of 10 minutes and then I'm going to uh, stop streaming for the day and we will actually build uh, the address decode and everything tomorrow. Um, so decoder, what we have is say uh, two bits coming in and what we want is four wires coming out and only one of these wires that we have will be switched on at a time. And we've sort of seen this in the design videos, um, how we can get this to work. So we can say, actually, if we build this, um, we can build this above or below. I think above is probably easier. If we build our two wires coming in up here, And we want to somehow link them to these. In such a way that only one wire is going to be on for each possible, each of the four possible values on, on these two inputs. So these have um, four possible inputs, uh, you know, one, zero, sorry, zero, zero, one, zero, Zero, one, 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 you know, whatever pattern. Um, and we're going to try and link them up to these wires somehow. So one way to do this is to place torches on the ones we want to enable or disable. So this kind of pattern. Um, but then we also need to connect these down into here, but without the hour kind of interfering. So uh, I guess the, there are probably a bunch of different ways one could try doing that. Um, I'm going to try and use this one. So we extract the power out of the wire, out of the block, sorry. And if I, oh, and I've, if I mess this up, yeah, I've messed this up because I <laughs> need this one as well. Okay, so zero, zero, we get just this one switched off. Uh, so this is again, negative logic. So if we want to make this positive logic, just to make it a bit, a tiny bit easier to understand, um, we will apply a NOT gate on the output. So I'll just do that to each of them. So we'll see hopefully that only one of these is on at a time if I've done this right. So first one, nope, I've not done this right. <laughs> not done it right, Maybe. me. Ah, so here's our problem, which is that these wires are linking up when I didn't want them to. Um, because that will mistakenly power this. Uh, the only solution to which is to build this further back, I think. That's useful to know. I'm sure there are other designs for this that work better. I'm sure someone out there in the Minecraft community is screaming, being like, no, you can build a decoder a different way. Never mind. Uh, oh, no. So this one we step down and extract the power. This one's going to be step down. One's going to have a torch. 
have a torch. Okay, maybe this will now work. So, oh, because I've still forgotten to break the connection. Okay, so there's our first one, and if I do it this way around, then. Hmm. Interesting. Have sworn this. Why is the power flowing back out of this? Oh, because that's connected as well. Thanks. This is right. So zero zero is the far one. Uh, one zero happens to be that one. 0, 1 is the next one along, and 1, 1 is this one. So you see that we can take these four, treat this as a four, uh, as a number, a two-bit number, and we can select one of the four outputs. Um, so later for, this is exactly what we're going to end up using for the memory here, because we're going to want to select one of the four columns. So we'll have two wires coming in, We'll select one of the four columns, and then we're going to have uh, four layers. So again, we'll have two wires, and we'll select one of the four layers. And then we have two rows, so we'll select one of the two rows. And by combining those three, you can see how we can address an individual byte, um, because it's where those uh, wires where those signals coincide in 3D. So you can think of it as uh, a line for where the row is enabled, a line for where the column is enabled, and a vertical line going up and down um, for uh, kind of the next... Um, well, you, the layer enabler is a bit kind of another <laughs> line going across. Ah, oh, I'm getting tired. Um, yeah, the rows going across there, the columns going down, and then the, the layers coming in as well, and where those all intersect, that's the byte that's enabled, and there'll only be one enabled at a time. Um, yeah, so that's the address decoder. Uh, the address is actually a bit more complicated because we have to choose between the output of the arithmetic unit and the output of our program counter, so that needs a multiplexer. So we've got to multiplex the outputs of the arithmetic unit and the program counter, then decode that output to the, to the memory, having duplicated the different, uh, to get four layers. Then we have to connect up all of the data inputs and make sure power flows to all of them. Then we have to connect up all of the data outputs to get a single data output from the memory. Then we have to multiplex the output of the arithmetic unit with the output of the memory from our single output from the memory, and then feed that all the way back to the inputs of the registers over here, where things get just as complicated. Uh, which is why I've left a big gap in the middle here next to the program counter register to account for some of that potential complexity. Uh, once we've done all of that, we can then build, we can then start filling in the control signals um, to link the bits together. And yeah, once that's all done, we can program the memory with a program and see if it works. But yeah, we're getting there. Uh, it looks neat so far from a distance. Uh, it's kind of neat with the four registers at the bottom, the arithmetic unit to the right, and the uh, memory over there. And it will reflect our module sim design um, and our logi sim design fairly well. Great, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, see you tomorrow when we'll do all of the address 
multiplexing and decoding and running wires everywhere. Thanks very much for watching.